And here we are hosting the Ghana International uh, School. It's all about their latest musical adaptation. I've been to some of these adaptations, so I know exactly what they're capable of. But this morning, we're joined by Olivia Lecosson, who is a media and communications manager with the Ghana International School. We also have Maureen Gentileza, a student, joining the conversation. Ladies, good morning. Good morning. Let me start with you, Olivia. And um, the Ghana International School organizes this from time to time. Like I said, I think I've attended two of uh, the one on Egypt. Yeah, Prince of Egypt. Prince of Egypt and, yes. and all of that. And Amazing. And of Venice as well. We've exactly. Tons of... Shylock and, and, exactly. and all of these. Exactly. But you do these from time to time. Yes. Uh, why? Is it to unearth artistic talent in, in, in the students? Certainly it is. Um, all work and no play makes Jack a dull boy. <laughs> so um, it's not always about academics. It's right. very important to include the arts in learning. It creates um, a platform for students to open up, for students to show off what they have. And if you don't create that platform, right. you end up finding that they have so much inside of them, but there's no opportunity to see it. Right. Um, for Prince of Egypt, for example, it was interesting because the script was put together by Dr. Mary Shen, and students were so creative that they came up with musical compositions, like from the scratch. I literally was in the studio with them. They were putting beats together, they were putting sounds together, and they were putting lyrics together. That so the go, students are very involved in They this. are very, very, very mm. involved with the acting and they have to memorize these scripts and mm -hmm. be on stage and be confident enough to tell the story. So all of that, if you don't create such platforms, you never know what. How, how long have you been doing this now? How long have you been organizing such For events? a good 12 years. 12 years? Yes. This so is, is this like... 12 musical adaptation. 12 musical adaptation. Yes. Yes, you guys it, have it would have been more, but because of COVID, we had to sort of stop mm. and um, put a hold on to it till now. So, uh, For you, Maureen, uh, Olivia has already spoken about how much of an integrated process it is. You are very much in the thick of things. What has the experience been like preparing for the next adaptation that we're going to be having? Right, so um, this year, GRS is going to be staging Death in the King's Horseman by mm. Willie Shoyenka. I myself am um, a character in the play. I'll be playing the character of Jane Pilkings. Okay. And the lines Do you love very, that character? Yes, it <laughs> is interesting. Uh, however, it's also diverse mm -hmm. in terms of what I believe in and what my character believes in. So it's been very interesting to take on. So, so you're basically taking on a role that says something different from what you actually believe. Interesting. In some terms, it does coincide with what I believe in, and in other values, it doesn't. Okay. Yes. But what's the experience been like? I mean, is this your first time getting into a role like this, playing, you know, a part in a play, so to speak, a musical adaptation? All right. Actually, it's not. I was in Merchant of Venice. Okay. Yes, and I played the role of a waitress, actually. So this time, it is a bit different in the terms of I am one of the main characters, and I have a lot more lines to learn and a, mo a lot more stage presence. Challenging, right? Yes, it is, but it's also fun. Uh, Olivia, tell us about some of the, the other adaptations you've had. And, and do you have, ever involve other schools? Yes. Um, like you were saying, we've done Les Miserables, we've done In the Heights, we've done... Oh. Oh, Victoria Go. Yeah. Wow. We've done Prince of Egypt. We've done Merchant of Venice. Sound I could go of music. Sound yeah. of music. That's a classic. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. I could go on and on. Um, but um, what we tend to also do is we tend to include other schools. So um, some years ago, we included La Wireless cluster of schools. Okay. So GIS is always opening up their doors to um, underprivileged um, schools so that they can either come and use our, labor like our laboratories or they can come and do musicals with us. So it was interesting to see students from a different background come and integrate with our students. And our arms were so open that on stage, you couldn't tell a GIS student from a non-GIS student. So we tend to do that a lot, give 
other people. I mean, now that you mentioned it, the two that I've seen, I've not been able to distinguish. I don't even know. Where exactly. They I haven't been able exactly. to tell. So, so that's some pretty good integration work you do exactly. there. And of course, I think it also helps, you know, there are the the, the, the so-called endowed schools and the not so endowed ones. So exactly. the mixture, of course, uh, works very well. Yeah. But so this year's musical, mm -hmm. it, it, Death and the King's Horseman, how, how did you come by that? Maybe I would ask, uh, how, how did you go about the choice, Maureen? Right, so um, Death and the King's Horseman, usually in GIS we've done musicals, so it's, the focus is more on the songs, the lyrics, the harmony. However, this year, since we're doing an adaptation of Death and the King's Horseman, it's a play, and so the focus now is on the acting. Right. And the literary um, work, the pieces by Willie Shoyenka, which is a beautiful work. So we've been working really hard, we've been making sure to do justice to his work, and I believe that it's all come together well, and I'm sure people would really enjoy the play. Mm -hmm. How many of you are going to be on set? What's the preparation been like? Uh, there's been a lot of preparation. So we have the main characters, and then we have backstage, we have props, we have the media team, and so all together we have costumes, and all of this is usually student-based. So the costumes, it's the students leading it. The characters, is the students leading it. The backstage is the students leading it. So it's very, very... It's a lot of responsibility you have a to lot. Yes, A lot, yes. A lot, a lot. We have about 60 in total in terms of the crew. Um, who are going to be putting this entire thing together. I love that it's very student driven as well because then like we were talking about the, the talents come to bear. Right. Yeah. So let's focus on this year's play. Where and when is it taking place? It's happening this Friday okay. and Saturday. 18th and 19th of March 2022 at from 6 p.m. to 8 p.m. at the National Theatre. And you don't want to miss it. I mean, it's the weekend. Take a chill pill. Ghana International yeah. School. And we've been doing this for years, 12 years. And I mean, I, I, we're the pace setters when it comes to musicals. We're the pace setters, especially within I think the we'll school. Give, we'll give you that. School. We'll give you that. <laughs> exactly. So you don't want to miss it. It's going to be awesome. Our literature teachers, yes. from um, Mr. Giacomani to Ms. Mrs. Vanderpoort to um, Mrs. O'Dampton. <laughs> Like they have been on their toes day, noon, and night with yes. these students and people who work behind the scenes on the principal. I mean, I could go on and on. Right. So just come and support them. And plus, what makes this musical even more, not a musical, the play, even more interesting is the fact that it's going to be used as an educational piece at the end of the day. Oh, I see. So, yes. Yeah. So it will be available in libraries for... Um, literature students to have access to it. It's a learning material. It's, it's literature thick. So at the end of the day, it's for a good cause. So right. schools who don't have that, you know, luxury to watch it in action can easily have it in the libraries. So yeah, the text and the video. That's a novelty, well. right? It's, it's a new bit. Yeah, it is a new Wow, that's refreshing. So as, as I take your final words, I'd, I'd also like to uh, find out, is it gratis? Uh, do we have to pay? How much is involved? It's very important. It so if you're coming, is. you're trooping to the National Theatre, how much is it going to cost you? We're looking at 100 CDs for adults and 50 CDs for students. Okay. So if you're a student, just get your tickets, where to get your tickets, you can easily pop by Ghana International School. We have a welcome center, come to us the secondary school section, come to the welcome center and purchase your tickets there. It's not a problem. Or you can dial the, the hash hash hashtag. Yes. Um, so it's star 389, star 65 hash. Could you slow down and give that? Oh yeah, sure. Star. So it's star 389, star 65 hash. One last time. Star 389, star 65 hash. All right. I had to. I had to bore her. Amazing memory. <laughs> right. Final words. Ten seconds each. Oh, final words. Ghana International School will be expecting every single one of you. So make it a date. You learn so much. There's so many riddles. It gets you thinking. So come and have fun. Don't miss it. Uh, yes, I agree with Ms. Olivia. I think everybody should make time. They should come and watch. The students have honestly put a lot of effort into this play. Months of effort, schoolwork, all together. We've been able to manage everything. And so I, ho I just hope that everyone enjoys it and sees what we have to display. Exactly. All right, so we'll all be trooping there Friday, Saturday 
and is going down. Olivia Le Cosson, uh, Media and Communications Manager with the GIS, thank you for coming. Thank and of course, you. Maureen Gentileza, yeah. student. Big ups. <laughs> That's how we wrap the show for another morning. Thank you for joining us this Wednesday morning on the AM Show. My name is Benjamin Akaku. Have a wonderful day.